2023 is almost over. Like, I'm saying seven hours till it's gone. Personally, there's been a few highlights for Fiona and I. The birth of our third granddaughter, Amity, who is gorgeous. I'm, I am biased a little bit. And Prue, if you ever see this, I'm not paying you for using her name. I've had, I've had my 10th anniversary at work. So, long service leave. First time in 46 years of employment that I've actually been there 10 years. I've gotten close a few times, but 10 years. Fiona and I shared our 36th wedding anniversary, which is pretty cool. And we started a new church, would you believe? Now, that could go in either the good or the challenges because there's been a few challenges. Fiona and I and those said mentioned kids and grandkids all got COVID again. It's it just, they're, they're children that share everything. Aren't they, aren't they great grandkids? They just share with you everything they have. Fiona and I have only been in Goulburn now for about 18 months and it's different to where we lived. We've got to come to grips and learn different things. Gosh, we were looking for a church for the first 12 months and it, we'd been in our last church for 17 years. We'd been assistant pastors for about 14 years, 15 years. And this is a new town or city, I should say, two cathedrals, it's yeah, a city. I've had to navigate through a few work changes and things, different people being um, promoted. I wasn't one of them. But, but through that, I get to keep my job and I've got a great relationship with the person that was promoted. And all through the year, helping family and friends with not difficulties as such but things that family and friends have and you lend a hand where you can when you can I'm sure you've all experienced good and bad during the last year would I be right in thinking that but that's the nature of life isn't it if it was all flat well Jesus told us what did he say he said in this world you will have trouble now if it's written in red he he said it he said it it's going to happen but look at the words in context because he said I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. We are called to be in this world, but not of it. And we're meant to be ambassadors of Christ, representing his kingdom here on earth. If you're following with your, or you have your Bible, 2 Corinthians 5.20. It says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as through God, we're pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. Ambassadors are pretty important people. Should see where they live in Canberra. Wow, some of those houses, hooly dooly. And some of them have got guards and big fences. Go figure. But the last 12 months, what's happened on the world stage? Well, wars. Do you know I looked up wars online? And they've actually got a top 10 wars of 2023. A top 10. There are more, but there's a top 10 wars and conflicts of 2023. Now, you'll have heard of some of them. Israel, the conflict in the Middle East, that's... Big in the news. Chechen, Ukraine, 
The Ukraine's been going for a while now. Russia's pounding. We hear about it and we think, oh, is that still going? Iran, there's always war in Iran. Yemen, the Houthi rebels. And there's about four conflicts in the African continent. Always. At this stage, I can name three of them, but I don't know where the fourth one is. But they're listening. There's so many wars. And how many natural disasters do you think there were in 2023? Tidal waves, volcanic eruptions, fires, droughts, floods. And do you know there's some places in in New South Wales that have had three of them this year? Drought, fire, floods in one year. Looking, I want us to look at Matthew 24. But I'm going to start in Matthew 23. That makes sense, doesn't it? (laughs) Now, Jesus, if you follow the story, I don't know if you know the story, but in Matthew 23, Jesus absolutely takes the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes to the woodshed. (laughs) He gives them the absolute rounds of the kitchen table. (coughs) He gives... he really puts it to them because they've not acknowledged him. They, they know what's said for him to happen, but, oh, no, can't be him. You know, you're upsetting the equilibrium. Well, PC, that wasn't, that wasn't a thing back then, but, but certainly. Verse 37 in Matthew 23 O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I have wanted to gather you, your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So he's told them up, told them the truth. And then the disciples, we get to 24. And I'll read, there's a slab of of scripture, but it's, it's really pertinent. Jesus said to them, they went out, and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. Mm. Think about this. Mm. He's in the temple. He's just called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And his disciples are saying, but look at the lovely buildings. Look at these buildings. And Jesus turns to them and says, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you that not one stone shall be left on another that shall not be thrown down. Now they're looking at these lovely buildings and going, what's he talking about? A little bit further, they walk along and go to the Mount of Olives and they quietly come up and say, what's going on? And Jesus said, do you not see all these things? Whoops, lost, lost a point. They said, tell us what all these things are about and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. now I want you to think about this and for us to get our head around it because these are the disciples that have walked with Christ for between three and three and a half years they've lived with him they've listened to him and they've asked him, what will be the sign of your coming? He's already there. Hang on a sec. Aren't you here? <laughs> You're here now. But they're asking, what will be the sign of his coming? Now, if someone's asking you, when are you coming? You're generally not there, are you? Yeah. So they know that he's going to go. This is the same Jesus that a couple of days earlier had entered Jerusalem 
on a donkey or a colt, a baby donkey that had never had a blanket on it, as it was prophesied, he would enter the city. And they were screaming out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They believed that Jesus was the Savior coming to Jerusalem to save them. Now, Hosanna, we just think it's, you know, really nice, please save us, is part of it. But in their language, it's almost a command to bring about or cause salvation. That's what they're screaming out to Jesus. Save us, save us. So they're asking, when will you come? Two days after they said, he's here to save us. And Jesus' answer in verse 6 onwards, remember what we just talked about a moment ago. Jesus said, and you will hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places, and these are the beginnings of sorrow. Then they will deliver you up in tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake, and many will be offended will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Good news though, verse 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations then the end will come. Do you think that the gospel has reached all the ends of the earth yet? There's a very, very, very big percentage. You see some of the things of tribes in Africa where they're very little money, but some of the kids have got phones. Like these phone networks must be banking on them becoming wealthy because they're putting towers up. Phones can be really good and they can be really bad. But they are a tool to spread the gospel. Now there's lots of prophecies like those that Christ just mentioned. And if you listened last week, I mentioned a couple and Fiona the week before. And there's many, many, many instances in the Old Testament that point to Jesus. In fact, I found there was 351 that were fulfilled by Jesus. And I want to go through them this afternoon. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Number one. But do you know what? Do you know what? They've all happened. They're done. And what you and I say or think or do is not affected by them at all. Not one little bit. So I want us to think about the things to come in 2024. Have you got any personal goals? Have you set any personal goals for 2024? Because you've now got six hours and 50 minutes to do so. Write them down though. <clears throat> yes, dictate them to someone. But I had a goal this year, and it's, it was a, those who know me well know that I'm a mad golfer. <laughs> Keen can go in there too, but just mad quite often. But last Wednesday was the last, my last game of the year for 2023. And when the, when the uh, results were put up and... I didn't win the day, but I played well. And when they posted the results, my new handicap is 5.7. Now, my goal two years ago was to get to five. 
The year before that, my goal was to get to single figures. So I've reached five. And to put that into perspective, that's in the top 6% of golfers in Australia. Wow. So, so that's, that's, that was a personal goal. 2024, I want to get down to three. And that gets down to about the, the top 4%. No, I, people always ask me, are you playing Saturday, you're playing Saturday, you're playing Saturday. But Saturday's not my day for golf. I play Wednesday mornings. <laughs> now, I know that golf's not everyone's cup of tea. It's a great way to spoil a walk, some people tell me. And, you know, why hit the ball away and then go and find it and hit it again? It's a good walk. Yeah. It well, well, they trained a gorilla. They said, we want you to hit this golf ball as close as you can to that flag. Train him for years. First time they put him on a golf course, he hit the ball this far from the hole. They went up and said, what do I do now? He said, hit it in the hole. He said, why didn't you tell me that back there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange game. The more, you, yeah, the more you know about golf, the harder it gets. Golf, as I say, I've got some plans or some goals for 2024. I want to do some stuff in our front and backyards. There. Money um, contingent, we'll say. You know, time and money will fix anything, really. And I know that Fiona had a, a goal and I think she's two assignments off her diploma. So... That's, that's a great achievement. But other goals that I have for 2024 is that each and every one of us grow in our relationship with Christ. I do hope that we can grow in number as well, but that's not as important because I don't know, I don't mind how many are in here as long as each of us becomes closer to Christ. As Fiona mentioned earlier, I want us to have home groups and Bible studies. And I want us to be ready for Christ's glorious return. Amen. <laughs> now, I've put it out there clearly and openly before. I'm a pre-tribber. For those who don't know, I believe in the rapture, as spoken of the hapazo in, in uh, 2 Thessalonians. And I believe that the church will be gathered up to meet Christ in the clouds before the earth is subject to the tribulation and the great tribulation. Seven years. But that's my view. I encourage you all to seek and study and come up with your own conclusions. Because don't trust anything I say. Search it out. Look for it. And if you're unsure and you say, Pastor, I'm not sure about this. Well, let's look it up together. Let's, let's dig into it together. Great topic. If, if someone comes up with a question, great thing to have in a Bible study. Tan asked me this question. Let's all find consensus or let's all look it up and see if we agree. Because learning the word, iron sharpens iron. Really, really important. But the reason it's so important is that I believe nothing has to happen in the world before Christ can return. All the boxes have been ticked. So he could return tomorrow. Are we ready? Do you all have friends and relatives that know Jesus or that don't know Jesus? Because I do. What about the people you work with? Do they all know Jesus? At mine they don't. But we are called, as I mentioned before, to be ambassadors of Christ. And as an ambassador, do you think the people around you are watching you to see how you do things? If, if you don't, then you possibly naive. Importantly, though, we can't walk around like the world 
and call ourselves Christians, there's got to be a difference. Otherwise, we're in danger of being a clanging symbol. Amen. No substance. And rather than you benefiting the kingdom, you could hurt the kingdom because people might say, well, if that's a Christian, I don't have to do anything to change because they're doing everything I'm doing. What's, my, what's the use of me trying to be a Christian? We need to demonstrate his life through ours. Now, I think, I don't know exactly when we, our first meeting in here was, but I said that every meeting that we held, an altar call. And so far that has been every week. No matter who has preached, we've given an altar call. So I'm not going to change from that. So I'd like every eye closed and every head bowed. And if you don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about, who could return any time, I want you to raise your hand.